march yourself yonder to your horse, mister. March, mister, I'm not fooling. Have you ever stopped to think about how Hollywood has managed to bring some of the more sinister characters to life? From iconic villains to real-life controversies, the entertainment industry has a knack for captivating audiences worldwide. So, buckle up as we journey through the shadows of Tinseltown and uncover the stories behind the 20 worst evil actors in Hollywood history. Let's begin. Number 20. Wallace Beery Wallace Beery was an American actor who was popular on the silver screen. With a career spanning over 250 motion pictures from 1913 to 1949, he was a force to be reckoned with in early Hollywood. Even when dressed in drag, Beery exuded a certain bad boy charm that captivated audiences and attracted the attention of the ladies. During the making of the Sweetie films, Beery crossed paths with the legendary Gloria Swanson, igniting a romance that would make headlines. But theirs was no fairy tale love story. Beery, nearly twice Swanson's age, embarked on a tumultuous relationship with the starlet when she was just a child of 16. From the outset, their relationship was plagued with unhappiness, ending in a shocking revelation that would rock Hollywood to its core. When Swanson fell pregnant with Beery's child, the actor devised a sinister plan to end both the marriage and the life of their unborn child. Swanson alleged that Beery administered medication that induced an abortion, leaving her devastated and alone. The scandal sent shockwaves through Tinseltown, tarnishing Beery's reputation but cementing his status as Hollywood's premier character actor. Despite the controversy, Beery's star continued to rise, earning him top billing and hefty paychecks that rivaled even the leading men of his time. Number 19. Robert Mitchum Robert Mitchum, a Hollywood legend known for his rugged charm and off-screen antics. But behind the silver screen lurked a controversial figure whose life was as chaotic as the characters he portrayed. Actually, he was no ordinary leading man. He was a force of nature, a dark presence that left chaos in his wake. He was popular, and it was bad for many people in the industry. In Not As a Stranger, Mitchum found himself amidst a cast of characters who shared his love for the bottle. The set resembled more of a brewery than a film studio. Morning drinking sessions turned into wild parties where hotel rooms were wrecked, wigs were eaten, and actors were thrown off balconies. It was a lifestyle of excess where consequences were an afterthought. During the filming of His Kind of Woman, Mitchum's dedication to his craft blurred the lines between reality and fiction. In a drunken haze, he attacked stuntmen with the ferocity of his on-screen persona, igniting a real-life brawl on set. Director Otto Preminger attempted to rein in Mitchum's wild ways by banning alcohol from the set. Yet, Mitchum's reputation preceded him, earning him special privileges even in the face of authority. Sadly, he died doing what he loved. As a lifetime smoker and user, he passed away in 1997 at the age of 79 due to complications from lung cancer and emphysema. Number 18. Greta Garbo in the golden age of Hollywood, one name resonated like no other, Garbo. But behind the allure and mystique lay a story of scandal and tragedy. Greta Lovisa Gustafsson, born in the humble streets of Stockholm, Sweden, emerged from poverty to become the legendary Garbo. Her childhood struggles probably fueled the melancholic roles she portrayed on screen. Garbo's journey to stardom wasn't conventional. She caught the eye of director Maritz Stiller, who saw potential in her raw talent. Despite initial rejection, fate brought them together for the saga of Ghost of Berlin. Stiller molded Garbo into a star, but the relationship had shadows. He controlled her every move, critiquing her appearance and demeanor. On set, Stiller's demands pushed Garbo to her limits. Greta was Hollywood's greatest icon. As MGM's highest paid star, she appeared in 25 films alongside several Hollywood giants, including Clark Gable. John Gilbert, John Barrymore, and Joan Crawford. She was recognized for her charisma, passion for the movies, and strong desire to remain hidden and enigmatic. For more than 15 years, Garbo approved every aspect of her films, from the story to the directors, co-stars, and cinematographers. This was an unmatched level of influence in the firm, as you see, and it frequently made her difficult to work with. Most importantly, it boosted her career. 
Many people have tried to examine her career and the inner workings of Garbo, but she spent her entire life trying. Garbo's influence extended beyond the silver screen. Disney animators drew inspiration from her aura of mystery and allure. The iconic evil queen bears resemblance to Garbo, Dietrich, and other Hollywood divas. Her fierce beauty echoes the allure of cinema's golden age. Number 17. Errol Flynn Errol Flynn already smelled like trouble, even before entering Hollywood. Growing up in Tasmania, mainland Australia, and England, Errol Leslie Thompson Flynn was a rebel from the start. His childhood was unlike any other, surrounded by wild animals and defying the norms. Errol's father, Theodore, a respected biology professor, introduced him to a world of tigers, kangaroos, and even Tasmanian devils. But Errol's rebellious spirit led him down a different path. By 17, Errol found himself expelled from school and running with Sydney's infamous Razor Gang. Determined to carve his own path, he set sail for New Guinea in 1926. In New Guinea, Errol embraced the rugged life, trying his hand at everything from plantation management to prospecting for gold. But his journey was far from smooth. He became entangled in the harsh realities of colonialism, recruiting indigenous men for labor and facing the dangers of tribal conflict. One day, Errol's expedition was ambushed by a local tribe, plunging him into a fight for survival. Charged with murder, Errol faced a trial that tested his wits and courage. Against all odds, he defended himself and walked free. And so began the legendary journey of Errol Flynn, from the wilds of New Guinea to the heights of Hollywood. Number 16. Mickey Rooney There are only a few actors from the past who will truly capture your heart, and Mickey Rooney was one of them. Rooney was a dream earning four Academy Award nominations and leaving an indelible mark on the screen. But behind all of the praise lies a different narrative. Rooney's onset behavior painted a stark contrast to the wholesome characters he portrayed. Wrestling with gambling and substance abuse, he faced personal struggles that hinted at a darker side to his professional life. Reports even suggest unsettling casting practices with young actresses allegedly auditioned for roles that existed only on the infamous casting couch of the industry. The real shocker? Allegations of a scandalous affair with a 14-year-old Elizabeth Taylor during Rooney's 20s, a time when he was already married. These instances merely scratched the surface, revealing a Mickey vastly different from the charming personas he embodied on screen. After co-starring with Elizabeth in National Velvet, he didn't have many nice things to say about the young star, calling her entitled, adding she lacked talent. What a waste, don't you think? Number 15. John Wayne John Wayne, unsurprisingly, is in the list. John, famously known for his rugged persona and conservative stance, had a surprising political journey. Early in his career, he identified himself as both a socialist and a liberal, a far cry from his later ultra-conservative views. In 1964, he openly supported Barry Goldwater for president due to Goldwater's opposition to the Civil Rights Act, reflecting Wayne's contentious political leanings. In a controversial interview with Playboy in May 1971, Wayne made headlines with his beliefs in white supremacy and his assertion that African Americans should not hold office until deemed educated to a point of responsibility. His views on race and politics stirred widespread debate and criticism. Wayne was also vocal in denouncing homosexuality, deeming certain films like Suddenly Last Summer and Midnight Cowboy as too distasteful and perverse for discussion. Despite his public stance, he maintained a close friendship with actor Rock Hudson, showcasing a complex personal dynamic. Even today, some film school students protest by walking out when his movies are screened, reflecting the enduring controversy surrounding his legacy. Democratic leaders have advocated for the removal of his name from the Orange County Airport due to his polarizing views. In a surprising twist, Wayne found himself referenced negatively in the 1989 hit Fight the Power by Public Enemy, highlighting the enduring impact of his controversial statements and beliefs on popular culture. Number 14. Faye Dunaway Faye Dunaway was a diva, and it was reported that she was proud of it. Old Hollywood was full of them, after all. From her legendary performances to her notorious behavior behind the scenes, Dunaway's tale is one of intrigue and controversy. In the pages of Easy Riders and Raging Bulls, 
a gripping account of Hollywood's golden age. Tales are told of Dunaway's eccentricities during the filming of the classic Chinatown in 1974. According to the book, Dunaway had a peculiar habit of not using the conventional restroom for the convenience of trash cans, sparking bewilderment among the film crew. It's said that Dunaway's disdain for traditional facilities reached such heights that she reportedly summoned workers to handle the task of flushing toilets in her dressing room, a demand that allegedly led to multiple resignations. But the most shocking anecdote from the set of Chinatown was an altercation between Dunaway and director Roman Polanski. Allegedly denied a bathroom break, Dunaway's response was nothing short of explosive. It's claimed that she hurled a cup of liquid later revealed to be urine at Polanski during a confrontation. When confronted with these allegations, Dunaway's response was as enigmatic as ever. In an interview with The Guardian, she dismissed the claims as absolutely ridiculous, refusing to dignify them with a direct response. But Dunaway's erratic behavior wasn't limited to Chinatown. James Woods, her co-star in the 1976 TV movie The Disappearance of Amy, recalled an incident where she lashed out at him for ad-libbing a line demonstrating a level of rudeness that left even seasoned Hollywood veterans in disbelief. But isn't that what Hollywood is all about? Even the formidable Betty Davis, renowned for her own cantankerous demeanor, voiced her disapproval of Dunaway's conduct. When asked by Johnny Carson to name Hollywood's worst, Davis didn't hesitate to single out Dunaway, cementing her reputation as one of Tinseltown's most polarizing figures. Number 13. Zsa, Zsa Gabor Zsa, Zsa Gabor, the Budapest-born socialite and Paris Hilton's great-aunt, left behind a distinctive legacy. She was among the first celebrities famous solely for their fame. With nine marriages under her belt, she never shied away from drama or scandal. But in her later years, her vibrant spirit was hindered by serious health issues, including a lung infection and the amputation of her right leg. In 1982, Gabor made headlines for allegedly insisting that several wheelchair-bound audience members be relocated from their front row seats during intermission at a Philadelphia theater. She later blamed the theater owner for the incident. During a layover in Atlanta, Gabor was removed from a flight bound for Los Angeles because she refused to keep her dogs in travel kennels, despite multiple requests from Delta agents. In June 1989, Gabor was pulled over for driving her $110,000 Rolls-Royce Corniche convertible with expired registration tags. Expecting leniency, she ended up in a physical altercation with the officer, resulting in her arrest and multiple charges, including battery upon an officer. Gabor attributed her reaction to her Hungarian heritage, claiming a Hungarian temper. Found guilty of battery, she served a 72-hour prison sentence in 1990. Despite her tumultuous life, Zsa, Zsa Gabor remains a captivating figure in the annals of celebrity history. Number 12. Gene Kelly Gene Kelly always seemed like a happy-go-lucky man thanks to his roles in films. But behind the scenes, the man known for his joyful dance numbers harbored complexities that often went unnoticed. Debbie Reynolds, the fresh-faced starlet, bore the brunt of Kelly's exacting standards during the filming of Singing in the Rain. Enduring grueling rehearsals and physical exhaustion, Reynolds struggled to keep pace with Kelly's demanding choreography. Reynolds' most difficult day was the shot for Good Morning. The song is about four minutes long and features extensive parts of demanding tap dancing in which Reynolds had to match Kelly and O'Connor tap for tap. The first day of filming ran from 8 a.m. to 11 p.m. Reynolds later recalled, My feet were bleeding. I couldn't move. Esther Williams, another Hollywood star, didn't mince words about her experience working with Kelly. She described it as pure misery, citing Kelly's demanding nature and penchant for control on scent. Even professionally trained dancers like Sid Charisse found themselves bruised and battered after Kelly's rigorous rehearsals. While Debbie Reynolds struggled with Gene Kelly's demanding choreography and singing in the rain, Sid, a seasoned professional dancer, faced her own challenges. Despite her expertise, Charisse found herself physically bruised from the intensity of Kelly's rehearsals. So much so that she joked her husband could know whether she'd been working with Fred Astaire or Kelly based on the bruises she bore at home. Apart from all that nightmare, did you know that Kelly married a 17-year-old girl when he was 29? 
Betsy Blair's whirlwind romance with Kelly reads like a script from one of his films. Yet, their age gap and unconventional courtship raised eyebrows even in the Hollywood of that era. Number 11. Bing Crosby There's a lot that goes on behind the camera. Sometimes you won't know what's real or not, not until everything has been revealed. Now, we have this actor and singer. Bing Crosby managed to capture the hearts of people worldwide for a significant portion of the 20th century. His second wife, Catherine Crosby, once said, everyone in the world was in love with Bing Crosby. Love him or not, one thing was crystal clear. Everyone was a fan of him. It wasn't until after his passing in 1977 that revelations about a purportedly dark and violent side of Crosby came to light. Fast forward to the 80s, and we get hit with a bombshell memoir, Going My Own Way, by Gary Crosby. Bing's own flesh and blood. Turns out, behind the velvety voice lurked a darker, more sinister side. Gary spilled the beans on what it was like growing up in the shadow of his famous father. Gary endured a childhood filled with weekly weigh-ins and, wait for it, beatings if the scale dared to tip. Can you believe it? Even his own siblings backed up Gary's claims admitting that life in the Crosby household wasn't all sunshine and rainbows. Number 10. Spencer Tracy Spencer Tracy, the iconic two-time Oscar winner, was a man of many talents on the silver screen. But behind the scenes, he had a darker side that shocked many. Tracy wasn't just your average drinker. He was a ticking time bomb waiting to explode. Tracy wasn't the type of guy you'd invite for a drink and a laugh. No, he was what you'd call a fun drunk in the worst sense. Bar fights? Check. Police custody? Regular occurrence. He even had a stint in a padded cell. Tracy's drinking escapades were the stuff of legends and not the good kind. Did you know that Tracy's preferred method of travel was? Train. Why? Because he could booze it up without worrying about the flight attendants judging him. His suitcase? Packed to the brim with bottles, ready to fuel his addiction as he chugged across the country. But Tracy wasn't always on a bender. He'd have his moments of sobriety, but once he fell off the wagon, it was a downward spiral. Picture this, Tracy holed up in a hotel room for weeks, sitting in the bathtub, drowning his sorrows and neglecting even the basic human needs. Hollywood studios weren't blind to Tracy's antics. Fox gave him an ultimatum, quit drinking or you're fired. His response, straight to the bar, get smashed and return to wreak havoc on the office. MGM, however, knew what they were getting into when they picked up Tracy. They had a whole squad dedicated to babysitting the depressive binge drinker. Known as the Tracy Squad, this team was on standby to whisk him away to sobriety whenever he went off the rails. Number 9. Lana Turner There's no lie when we say Hollywood, land of money, and scandal. But perhaps no tale is as controversial as that of Lana Turner, the blonde bombshell whose life was a roller coaster of fame, fortune, and tragedy. But behind the glitz lay a string of failed marriages and controversial affairs. From eloping with band leader Artie Shaw to rumored entanglements with leading men like Clark Gable, Lana's love life was a whirlwind of passion and pain. Rumors swirled like confetti at a premiere. Lana's alleged dalliances with Hollywood's leading men, including the dashing Clark Gable, set tongues wagging and headlines blazing. The late 50s brought Lana face to face with danger in the form of Johnny Stampanato, a mobster with a penchant for violence. Their tumultuous affair reached a boiling point one faithful night in Beverly Hills, ending in a shocking act of self-defense. The media frenzy that followed painted Lana as a fallen star, her private life dragged through the mud by gossip mongers like Hedda Hopper, and amidst the chaos, her daughter Cheryl's life was forever altered. Number 8. Elizabeth Taylor Elizabeth Taylor's journey through the spotlight was a roller coaster of public perception. Admired by many for her acting and captivating beauty, she stood as a symbol of Hollywood glamour. But her personal life often stirred controversy, drawing both admiration and condemnation, especially when it comes to Debbie Reynolds. In a saga just like that of the Betty Davis and Joan Crawford feud, another Hollywood tale unfolded. We were friends for years and years, Reynolds recounted in a 2015 interview with People magazine. But we had a lapse of time when she took Eddie to live with her because she liked him too. It all began in 1955 when Reynolds wed the charming Eddie Fisher. The couple seemed to be the perfect example of Hollywood romance. 
but the facade shattered when tabloids blazed with scandalous headlines when Fisher's affair with Elizabeth Taylor, a close family friend, came to light. Shortly after the tragic death of Taylor's husband, Mike Todd, in a plane crash, Fisher sought solace with the grieving widow. Reynolds, unsuspecting, cared for Taylor's children while the affair brewed under her roof. The scandal rocked Hollywood to its core. Fisher was vilified as a heartless cad, abandoning his wife and children for forbidden love. And Taylor? She was branded a homewrecker by the unforgiving press. In 1959, Reynolds finally drew the curtain on their marriage, filing for divorce and marking the end of an era. Even with the backlash and criticism she faced, Taylor remained unapologetically herself, refusing to conform to society's expectations. Number 7. Betty Davis Betty Davis, known for her striking eyes and roles as the unlikable character, poured her heart and soul into acting. She earned a remarkable 10 Oscar nominations, proving talent outweighs just looks. But Davis's journey to the top was far from smooth. She walked down the aisle four times, challenged powerful studio heads, and engaged in a legendary clash with Joan Crawford. Right from her debut, Davis sparked strong opinions. The Manhattan Civic Repertory Theater even rejected her, citing her frivolous and insincere demeanor. But rejection only fueled her fire. Davis's career was just beginning to simmer. During the filming of Dangerous alongside her iconic rival Crawford, Davis found herself entangled in a passionate love triangle. She fell for co-star Francois Tone, who happened to be dating Crawford. Talk about drama. The feud between Davis and Crawford ignited in the mid-1930s, fueled by their shared interest in Tone. Davis, infatuated with Tone during Dangerous, faced disappointment when he chose Crawford. Crawford's departure from MGM to Warner Brothers in 1943 further fueled the fire, especially when she snagged Davis's rejected role in Mildred Pierce. Despite being married, Davis pursued Tone relentlessly, causing Crawford to take notice. Determined not to lose, Crawford pressured Tone into a swift engagement during filming, leaving Davis heartbroken on set. Davis vowed never to forgive Crawford for stealing her man. Number 6. Joan Crawford Betty Davis, a rising star, found herself overshadowed by the glamorous Joan Crawford. But hold on, Davis wouldn't be on this list if it weren't for Crawford's headline-stealing antics. Davis was fuming when Crawford, already a big name, pulled off a publicity stunt that stole the spotlight from Davis's movie premiere. The tension skyrocketed when Crawford, known for her romantic escapades, divorced Douglas Fairbanks Jr. on the same day Davis was set to shine. Jealousy took center stage when Davis developed feelings for Francois Tone Crawford's beau. Tone, the leading man in Davis's film Dangerous, broke her heart by marrying Crawford. Cue the epic Hollywood love triangle. Fast forward to the 1940s, Davis surpassed Crawford in stardom. Both contracted to Warner Brothers, their adjoining dressing rooms became the battleground for one of the most legendary rivalries in Hollywood history. Davis rejected Crawford's attempts at friendship with snide comments about lesbian overtures. But wait, there's more to this Hollywood story. In 1978, Christina Crawford, Joan's adopted daughter, shocked the world with a jaw-dropping memoir exposing her mother's dark side. At just 13, Christina stopped believing her mother loved her. In a shocking revelation, she detailed incidents of abuse, including being grabbed by the throat, punched in the face, and slammed against the floor. Imagine, folks, the harsh reality behind the glitzy Hollywood facade. Number 5. Frank Sinatra When we think of Frank Sinatra, we envision a musical icon, Old Blue Eyes, the chairman of the board, and a key member of the Rat Pack. He's known for revolutionizing 20th century music, leaving an indelible mark that continues to inspire musicians today. His charm, charisma, and unmatched style have influenced countless artists who aspire to capture even a fraction of his essence. Following his passing in 1998, President Bill Clinton, speaking for the nation, remarked, I think every American would have to smile and say, he really did it his way. Despite Sinatra's musical genius, he wasn't without his flaws. He struggled with anger management and often clashed with reporters and cameras. However, his music remains effortlessly enjoyable, bypassing analytical thought to stir deep emotions, much like his signature Jack Daniels drink. In the 1940s, Sinatra's rise to fame caused concern among parents of swooning Bobby Soxers and even fellow crooner Bing Crosby. 
Crosby, known for his warm voice, felt threatened by Sinatra's arrival on the scene. Unlike Bing's paternal persona, Sinatra showed a streetwise charm and had a reputation for being a bit of a rebel, a trend later echoed by Elvis Presley and other rebellious performers. Sinatra's charm wasn't just in his voice because it was in his eyes, a sharp gleam that hinted at a tortured soul, drawing fans into his world of heartbreak and romance. His ability to make each listener feel uniquely connected fueled his celebrity sex appeal, making authorities uneasy. In songs like Polka Dot and Moonbeams, Sinatra buried his fragile heart with a captivating intensity, leaving an indelible mark on 20th century culture and forever altering the landscape of celebrity allure. Number 4. Milton Berle Back in the day, Berle's Texaco Star Theater was so popular that it literally doubled the number of TVs in American homes. Berle soared to superstardom, but with fame came its fair share of pitfalls. Think divorces, womanizing, and a rather large ego thrown around. Milton Berle, unfortunately, earned the notorious nickname the Thief of Bad Gags. RuPaul even called him out at the 1993 MTV Video Music Awards. Their on and off camera interactions were far from friendly, leading to an awkward torch passing moment gone wrong. RuPaul eventually cut ties with MTV after the incident. He faced a lifetime ban from hosting NBC Saturday Night Live. When he guest hosted in 1979, Burl tried to take over the entire show during rehearsals, upstaged his fellow cast members, and recycled old comedy bits. Despite efforts to keep the episode from rerunning, copies surfaced in 2003 revealing the impact of Burl's disruptive behavior on others. Burl wasn't just known for his comedic talent. He claimed to have had numerous relationships, some more scandalous than others. One shocking connection was with Amy Semple McPherson, also known as Sister Amy, a Canadian Pentecostal evangelist with a Hollywood soft spot. Rumors largely fueled by Burl himself suggested an affair after Sister Amy's alleged fake kidnapping. However, she vehemently denied these accusations. Number 3. Clara Bow Classic stars often come with a baggage of tales, some true, some spun out of thin air. Clara Bow, the original It Girl, found herself ensnared in a web of gossip and controversy that still lingers today. Clara Bow's name was smeared by sensationalized stories, including a ludicrous piece in the Coastal Times, hurling every indecency her way. Kenneth Anger's scandalous Hollywood Babylon added fuel to the fire claiming Bo frolicked with the USC football team. Yet, reality often gets lost in the chaos of scandal. Aside from this, she made a few things popular. She flaunted the modern flapper, embracing a wild lifestyle that fueled the rumors. She reveled in partying, frequented bars, and indulged in affairs, flaunting it all on screen with audacity. While some tales seemed far-fetched, credible accounts paint a vivid picture of Bo's daring escapades. Paramount President B.P. Schilberg's soiree became a stage for Bo's audacity when she drunkenly French-kissed a judge, much to his wife's dismay, before being swiftly escorted out. So, yes, she challenged conventions and paved the way for future generations of actresses to embrace their sexuality and assert their autonomy. Her unapologetic embrace of her own desires stood in stark contrast to the repressive social norms of the time, making her both a symbol of liberation and a lightning rod for criticism. Number 2. Charlie Chaplin Behind the slapstick facade lies a controversial legacy that might just shock you. Known for his on-screen persona, the tramp, Charlie Chaplin, became a global icon. But did the years of laughter and fame truly mask a darker side of Chaplin? Beyond the laughter, Chaplin's personal life was riddled with controversy. Those who knew him intimately painted a picture of a callous, exploitative, and sadistic individual. His serial womanizing, bordering on criminal behavior, garnered him infamy. Coupled with his demanding standards as a filmmaker and a pension for hurting those close to him, Chaplin became a figure of adulation and controversy in equal measure. In 1918, Chaplin hastily married 17-year-old Mildred Harris, later regretting the union as irreconcilably mismated. His marriage to 16-year-old Lita Gray ended bitterly. Amid a high-profile paternity suit in 1943, 54-year-old Chaplin married 18-year-old Una O'Neill, causing a rift with her disapproving father, playwright Eugene O'Neill. Surprisingly, this union would be the only enduring one, lasting until Chaplin's death at 88. 
Despite spending nearly four decades in the United States, Chaplin never became a citizen. His film Modern Times, a satire of the machine age, led to accusations of communism sympathy. During the McCarthy era, he faced FBI surveillance and a congressman calling for deportation. In 1952, the U.S. government revoked his reentry permit, prompting Chaplin to uproot his family to Switzerland, where he remained until his death. In 1972, Chaplin made a brief return to the U.S. to accept an honorary Academy Award. His controversial legacy, blending genius and darkness, challenges the traditional narrative of a comedic genius. What do you think about Charlie Chaplin's controversial side? Number 1. Mae West Mae West always felt destined for more than the typical life of a Victorian housewife. In her 1959 autobiography, Goodness Had Nothing to Do With It, she reflects, I was a child of the new century, just around the corner, and I ran towards it boldly. She is remembered as a trailblazer who challenged the norms of early Hollywood and American society. Not only when she was an actress and singer, but also a comedian, playwright, and screenwriter. Her entertainment career began in vaudeville as a child, but she gained notoriety with her first major role on Broadway in 1926 in a daring play she wrote, directed, and produced called Six. The scandal surrounding the play led to West being sentenced to 10 days in jail on April 19, 1927 for allegedly corrupting American youth. Throughout her life, Mae West shattered outdated views of femininity. Through her plays, movies, and stage performances, she celebrated female sexuality and challenged societal taboos with humor and glamour. In the documentary Mae West, Dirty Blonde, produced by Bette Midler and premiering on PBS, West is portrayed as a fearless cultural provocateur, an unabashed sexual gangster. After years on the vaudeville circuit, West found success on Broadway with Six. As the playwright and star, she gained fame and notoriety. During her 10-day prison sentence, she insisted on wearing her own silk underwear, which is allowed by the warden. Despite the circumstances, West made an impression on her fellow inmates, aiming to uplift their spirits amidst the challenges of prison life. And there you have it, a rundown of the 20 worst evil actors in Hollywood history. Which of these evil actors left the most lasting impression on you? Let us know in the comments below and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more shocking insights into the film world.